a very warm welcome from Vienna on this International Women's Day. My name is Sebastian Schaeffer. I am the managing director of the Institute for the Danube Region and Central Europe. And today it is my pleasure to have this extraordinary event on the occasion of the 65th anniversary of the re-establishment of the diplomatic relations between Austria and Albania, which happened actually on 7th February, but we chose this very special day today to have a wonderful panel. And I don't want to take away any more time. Thank you very much for joining us uh, today. I will um, lead you through this event, but now I'm handing over to um, Ambassador Roland Bimo, who started this initiative. And I'm very grateful, Your Excellency, that you did this. It's an honor to serve as a host for this occasion. And I hope we have a very interesting discussion over the next one hour. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, but simply to pay due where it belongs, the first mentioning for this event was from Ambassador Klaus Wilford. So I have the credit for taking up from him and continuing this further. It was he that uh, initiated the whole thing. And I'm indeed very grateful to you, Mr. Schaefer, for uh, putting all this together uh, in such a short time. And uh, I am so honored to have this uh, panel that uh, I consider indeed the best that anyone can have for uh, having an opinion on the relations between Austria and Albania and further afield with the West Balkans. Uh, honorable members of the panel, Dr. Busek, Dr. Iber, dear Professor Pascal, and uh, Pramvera. A very difficult times, but indeed we managed to get together and celebrate the five anniversary of re-establishing diplomatic relations between Austria and Albania. Uh, this was, as I mentioned, uh, thanks to the efforts of the Good for Danube region and Central Europe and the uh, directing manager, uh, Zephyr. Uh, support for this event was given by also, uh, was also given by the foreign ministries in Tirana and uh, in Vienna. And the, this support is demonstrated by the video message that we will see in two seconds from Federal Minister Schallenberg and European and Foreign Minister of Albania, Madame Olta Dutch. I thank them both wholeheartedly. Anniversaries are moments of festivities, but also of reflection and uh, summarizing lessons to be learned and conclusions to be drawn for the future. We, all can recall that during the last years of uh, many initiatives, uh, among others, the Berlin process for integrating the region into the European Union, us word has been connectivity. And this has a special meaning for Albania, as it has been disconnected for, from the European development and processes for a very long time. Centuries of Ottoman domination and half a century of airtight communist isolation. Borrowing a quote from Prime Minister Edi Rama during one of his frequent visits to Vienna, and I quote, Albania owes a lot to Austria's support, particularly during their most critical times. Austrian the researchers have been contributing to the field of Albanian studies, and Austrian diplomats and politicians, and I think we have one of them in the panel today, or maybe more, has helped the Europeanization of Albanian policies from Gustav Meyer to Franz Franitsky, and the list is long and full of inspiring personality. End of quote. I'm so happy and grateful that we were able to come together, and I would be remiss not to mention how much I value the support of Ambassador Klaus Wolfer and Mimosa Halimi. To friends and interested that are following on YouTube, I would remind to make full use of this opportunity to learn more from the best minds on the subject of Austria's relations. Albania and the region. I wish to the panelists and all of you uh, all possible success and above all in such times great health. Thank you, Mr. Sheffer, and good proceedings of the webinar. Thank you very much, Ambassador Bimo, for these 
introductory speech and we will continue with a video message from His Excellency Mr. Alexander Schallenberg, the Austrian Federal Minister for European and International Affairs. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure for me to address this event together with my dear colleague Alter. Indeed, I would have preferred to meet all of you in person to celebrate a milestone in the Austrian-Albanian history of friendship, namely 65 years of diplomatic relations. However, I'm grateful for the opportunity to at least be able to, to join you virtually, and I would like to thank the organizers for this initiative and their efforts, most notably the Albanian Embassy in Vienna and the IDM with its chairman, Erhard Busek. Ladies and gentlemen, Fruitful diplomatic relations are somewhat similar to a journey on a tandem. They have to be kept in motion by constant common engagement and dedication. In short, for bilateral relations to really work, it takes two to tango. And yes, we did tango in the last 65 years. In 1956, in the midst of the Cold War, Austria and Albania reached out to each other, despite the profound divide between East and West at the time. Since then, the friendship between our two nations has always proven its worth, especially in difficult times. Recent and visible examples were our aid after the major earthquakes hitting Albania in 2019, and our ongoing support during this pandemic, where we promote the provision of vaccines by the European Union to all countries of the Western Balkans. The most urgent task right now is to stand together in managing the current crisis and in jointly working on a quick economic recovery. Ladies and gentlemen, despite the current difficult circumstances, Austria will not slow down its efforts to fully integrate Albania and the other Western Balkan countries into the family of the European Union. Against this backdrop, my first trip abroad after the lockdown in spring last year led me together with EU Minister Karolina Edstadler to Tirana. This was a deliberate signal of our continuous and strong support for Albanian friends. During the last years, Albania has undertaken far-reaching reforms and has made significant progress into the right direction. And we believe that 2021 should finally be the year of the start of accession negotiations between the EU and Albania. I can assure you that Austria will continue to speak up for the Western Balkan region and keep this topic high on the agenda with our EU partners in Brussels. So let us look ahead to the future with optimism, a not too distant future where we would love to welcome Albania as a new partner within the European Union. I wish you all a fruitful discussion today. Thank you. Thank you very much to Minister Schallenberg for his words. And we will now see a video message by Her Excellency, the Albanian Minister for Europe and Foreign Affairs, Olta Shachka. Dear friends, anniversaries are a moment of celebration, but anniversaries are also a good moment to reflect on what has gone by, on where we are at, and above all, look forward to the future. And as with all anniversaries, so with the 65th anniversary of the re-establishment of diplomatic relations between Albania and Austria. I want to take a moment to reflect on the past we share and make a promise for the future. There is so much history between us. Indeed, the 65th anniversary is more than anything a date defined by the vagaries of ideologies and regimes of the past. Because 65 years is but a fraction of the centuries that connect us, the relation with Austria and the Austrian people has in many ways defined the history of Albania and the Albanian people. Even before the Austrian and Albanian states existed in their present form, our people cooperated, traded, made alliances, worked together. It is a fact known to any Albanian child that the Austrian-Hungarian Empire was one of the staunchest supporters of the Albanian independence. And just as importantly, one of the most important channels through which the culture, developments, and ideas of Europe reached Albania for centuries, keeping the Albanian's European dream alive. Austria stands by us now as in the distant past. 
I am grateful for the generous assistance in the aftermath of the 2019 earthquake and for the assistance for dealing with the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. The support Austria has shown for Albania's um, European Union integration project has been constant and unwavering. Perhaps our shared history has informed Austria better than most on how much the Albanian people cherish the European dream. And I thank Austria for supporting us from the first moment when we dared to embark on this path in the dark days of the collapse of uh, communism and for the very concrete support you are offering us now that we are working so hard to secure our first intergovernmental conference in 2021. Relations between us encompass a broad span of fields and sectors and Austrian companies are an important component of our economy. Austrian aid has been very significant and Austria's investment in our region's stability and security, especially through the 600 troops it maintains as part of K4 in Kosovo is a serious guarantee of its commitment to peace in the Western Balkans. Most, uh, more recently still, we established an excellent cooperation during Albania's chairmanship of the OSCE and worked together to address global challenges that concern both our countries. I can only hope that this friendship and cooperation with such a solid and ancient foundations will continue and expand in the future to our cooperation in diplomacy when Albania gains a non-permanent seat in the United Nations Security Council, which Austria so generously supported, and also through our cooperation in areas of business, development, culture, and education. And I can guarantee that much in the same spirit uh, of all my predecessors in this post, you will have in me a friend and partner that deeply appreciates the special relationship that history has reserved for our people. Thank you very much also to Minister Shachka. And uh, this is, I think, a perfect basis for our panel discussion. And the first contribution with the title Re-Establishment of the Diplomatic Relations in 1956 and Dynamics of Their Development until 1992 will come from Associate Professor Convera Tili Dibra, who is the director of the historical archives at the Ministry for Europe and Foreign Affairs of Albania. Professor Tili, we are very much looking forward to your contribution. Hello, thank you. Hello, everybody. Professor uh, Milo, Professor Busse, Professor Bieber, Excellence Ambassador Bima. Uh, it's a good occasion to exchange our thoughts, our studies about these historical uh, relations and also so powerful actual relation. Uh, after the elections of November 1945 in Austria, the occupation authorities announced the recognition of Austria as a state in January 1946. This meant that Austria would begin to conduct foreign relations. The Albanian government was not part of the group of governments that recognized the Austrian government from the beginning. The first conversation, according to our archival sources, on the issue of establishing diplomatic relations between the two countries took place in Roma in April 1955. The Austrian embassy in Roma addressed to the Albanian ambassador the fact that the Albanian government had not yet recognized the government of the Austrian Republic, and as a result, there were no diplomatic relations between the two countries. Following an analysis of the international circumstances, taking also into account the opinion from Moscow, with which Albania was at the peak of bilateral friendship, and based on the political recommendation of Politburo, the Albanian government decided on August 10th, 1954, to recognize the Austrian government and to establish diplomatic relations. The Albanian ambassador in Roma officially informed his Austrian counterpart about the decision of the Albanian government. The ambassador, undertook to forward the proposal to Vienna. Two weeks passed, but no response from Vienna. In February 1955, during an informal conversation between the two diplomatic representatives in Roma, the Austrian ambassador pointed out that the Austrian government was seeking an opportune moment to report this proposal to the Allied Council, according to him, in order to establish diplomatic relations with non-UN member states, such as Albania was at the time, the Austrian government had to obtain the unanimous approval of the Allied Council. 
On the other hand, on May 15, 1955, the Austrian State Treaty was signed by the Allied Commission, which proclaimed the permanent neutrality of Austria as a strategic area between two blocks. The treaty was approved as a federal law by the Austrian Parliament in October 1955 and entered into force in November of this year. The law was submitted with a special note to the Albanian Embassy in Belgrade also, requesting its recognition by the Albanian government. However, the Albanian government did not take such a step without first establishing diplomatic relations between the two countries. The Austrian government made public its decision to establish diplomatic relations with Albania on December 12, 1955, six days after Albania accession, Albania's accession to the United Nations. On January 1956, the Austrian ambassador to Belgrade paid a visit to the Albanian representative there, Bato Karafili. He communicated the decision of the Austrian government of 20th December to establish diplomatic relations with Albania and the accreditation in Tirana of its ambassador in Belgrade. The consent of the Albanian government of this decision was expected. Choosing Belgrade to carry out this act geopolitically was not done without purpose on the part of Austria. By 1948, Yugoslavia had formally left the Eastern Bloc and remained outside the Cold War blocs. Together with Austria and later Switzerland, it formed a strategic buffer corridor between the two Cold War political military blocs that were being consolidated. The response of the Albanian government was immediate, agreeing with the decision of the Austrian government, but calling this moment as establishment, not re-establishment of diplomatic relations, taking into consideration the relations between Second World War between the two countries. On February 7th, 1956, at the headquarters of the Albanian legation in Belgrade, diplomatic notes were exchanged between two plenipotentiary ministers and normal diplomatic and consular relations were established between the two countries. In this speech, in his speech, the Albanian minister Bato Karafili highly pointed out the importance of the independence and neutrality of Austria and wished its progress in peace as a guarantee for a positive development of relations between the two countries. Starting from June 1956, Austria was represented in Albania by Walter Wodak, the Austrian ambassador of Belgrade. Meanwhile, from October 1956, Albania was represented diplomatically in Austria by Kocho Prifti as the extraordinary plenipotentiary envoy of Albania to Austria with residence in Praga. The first development in these relations was marked by the proposal of the Albanian government in mid-1956 to reach a trade agreement between the two countries, pledging that Albania would achieve the commitments made in the field of exports to Austria. This proposal was supported by an Austrian side, but the process took five years to be finalized. On the other hand, after obtaining the consent of official Moscow on September 21st, 1956, the Albanian government informed the Austrian side that Albania had recognized all the legal effects of the permanent neutrality of Austria, declared by it in October 1955. Also, in October 1956, Albania voted in favor of establishing in Vienna the headquarters of International Atomic Energy Agency. On July 1961, the first agreement between the two governments was signed in Vienna after the reestablishment of diplomatic relations, called on the exchange of goods and payments between the government of Republic of Albania and Austrian federal government, an agreement directly related to the economic interests of both countries. The agreement also provided the creation of an Albanian-Austrian joint committee, government committee, that would deal with the implementation of the uh, agreement and economic cooperation in general. Archival facts prove that this committee signed 11 meeting protocols for trade cooperation during 1965-1979. 11 meeting protocols. protocols. With the aggravation of relations between Tirana and Moscow, and consequently with the whole Eastern Bloc, Albania was interested in strengthening the political relations with Austria, which was politically and economically Western-oriented, but not part of a Western Bloc. Austria was also an economic potential partner while Soviet aid was cut off. In these conditions, on December 12, 1961, the Albanian government decided to open a permanent diplomatic legate in Vienna. Meanwhile, the Austrian side continued to use the financial argument as an obstacle for the opening of its legate in Tirana. In fact, like Switzerland, Vienna feared an irritation for Belgrade in taking this step in the context of strained relations between Albania and Yugoslavia at the time. 
Moreover, there was not any considerable number of Austrian citizens in Albania in order to justify holding a legation in Tirana to defend their interests. The Albanian government had a growing interest in strengthening its presence in Vienna, the place where the political East and West physically met. In January 1966, the Albanian side proposed raising the level of diplomatic representation between the two countries from legation to embassy. The proposal was accepted. Apart from the historical reason and current interest for the promotion of these relations with Albania, according to our diplomatic archival evidences, another reason was the special place that Albania had on that time in China's foreign policy in the region. This act would be a good sign for Austrian relations with China, with which Austria had not yet established diplomatic relations. On 15th March 1966, both sides published in the local press the news that the governments of the two countries had decided for the representation of the two countries to be erased from legations to embassies level. Trade exchanges were the core of bilateral relations until 1985. As instructed from Tirana, Albanian diplomats in Vienna were not to touch on political topics in bilateral relations or developments in the region and beyond. It would be noted, it should be noted that all the agreements signed between the two countries during 1956, 1991, are on the development of trade relations between the two countries, except the agreement of 1984 between the uh, television agencies of two countries and 1986 between the Academic of Sciences of two countries. Others were all on agreements and exchange of goods and payments. After Hoja's death in 1985, with the beginning of liberalizing tendencies in Albanian foreign policy, but also with a deeper economic crisis in the country due to self-isolation, as well as in the framework of the new positive spirit in East-West relations, Albania-Austrian diplomatic relations recognized new political developments. On September 26, 1985, two foreign ministers, Reis Malil and Graz, met at the headquarters of the Austrian mission in United Nations, New York. The Albanian minister invited the Austrian foreign minister for a first political visit to Tirana to discuss the progress of bilateral relations, especially trade ones. The proposal was well received by Minister Graz and was considered as a significant change in bilateral relations. He stressed the fact that the entrance of the two superpowers, superpowers in negotiations with each other showed that the former state of rigid politics and structures were being lost. Therefore, Albania and Austria needed to talk honestly about these developments in a friendly position. There is an Austrian intention to strengthen the strategic cord between the two blocs under the influence of the Western factor as a guarantee for the preservation of geopolitical balance. Among the first political topics discussed between the two parties in this new political climate was the Austrian demand for the improvement of Albania's relations with Yugoslavia. This request was first articulated by the Austrian ambassador, Paul Liefer, in the meeting with speaker of uh, Presidium of uh, Popular Assembly, Ramiz Alia, on March 1986. He addressed Alia with these specific words, I quote, you said that Albania had no interest in destabilizing Yugoslavia. You also said that you have no interest in the Russians being in these two countries. I guarantee you that these are common interests of Albania and Austria. With all the different systems, we have a similar geographical position. And I think this is an important basis for cooperation in areas of mutual interest. We cannot imagine anything more beautiful than the cooperation between Switzerland, Austria, Yugoslavia, and Albania. For this reason, there is a great interest in good relations between you and Yugoslavia. In addition, the ambassador stressed the fact that Austrian energy interests are articulated for the first time during this meeting. The Austrian ambassador said that Austria had no interest had an interest, a strong interest in receiving energy from Albania. And this energy would come to Austria through Yugoslavia as it had a direct transmission line from Yugoslavia to Austria. This was one more reason to improve Albania's relations with Austria, with Yugoslavia, sorry. Alia accepted the used argument, but refused to allow this to happen at the expense of the rights of Albanians living within the Yugoslav borders. Another important moment in bilateral relations this November 1987, when the Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs, Thomas Clare, sent an official invitation to the Albanian Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Socrat Plaka, to visit Austria. 
emphasizing the importance of the two countries in the joint strategy corridor, among other things, the invitation said, Albania and Austria see from the past a long way to go through historical developments that played an important role in shaping Europe as we know it today. Moreover, I feel that there are great opportunities to increase and develop mutual contexts in the common interest of our two countries. That is why I would judge for a reviewed review dialogue between our two countries to benefit not only from bilateral relations, but also to contribute to a better understanding in a wider European context. A very good message for the Albanian part. The invitation was accepted in the former Central Committee of the Labour Party. It was agreed that discussion of political issues to be avoided during the visit without concrete commitments. The Albanian side would focus mainly on relations with Yugoslavia and developments in Kosovo. Emphasizes would be placed on the need to increase the volume of trade between the two countries. The visit took place one year later, on November 1988. In fact, it took place after Albania's participation in the first full meeting of the Balkan Minister of Foreign Affairs in Belgrade, February 1988, which was a significant step of Albanian regional policy and its relations with Yugoslavia. It was the first political visit of an Albanian delegation to Austria. Socrat Plaka was received by the high level authorities of the Austrian state. The foreign press commented Plaka's visit to Vienna as a sign of Albania's political and economic opening. In response to the invitation of the Albanian side, on May 1989, official Tirana was visited by an Austrian political delegation led by the Secretary General of Mi Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Thomas Klestil. It was agreed to exchange the visit of Minister of Foreign Affairs during the first quarter of 1990, but due to the dy dynamics political developments in Eastern Europe, this visit did not take place. The last request is by the Albanian communist government, late 1919 and beginning 1991, for economic assistance from Austrian government did not, did not take a response to Vienna in Vienna. Logically, Austria would not invest in keeping in power a regime in decline and despise within his own country. The Albanian authorities were informed that many of the requests of the Albanian government would be answered after March 31 elections, first pluralist elections in Albania, and that this was the case with all, European, all Eastern European countries. The Austrian government became politically involved in the internal developments in Albania during 1991. It reacted harshly to, to the attitude of the police forces during the events in Škoda in December 1990 and in Tirana in February 1991, and called on the Albanian government, which was trying to create a new international image, not to return to the communist methods of oppression. The Austrian government also began hosting representatives of the new Albanian opposition in Vienna and sent observers to the country's first pluralist elections. Austria supported Italy economically in hosting the Albanian refugees in March 1991, but did not provide concrete economic assistance to the Albanian government. After the establishment of the first pluralist government in Albania in June 1991, the accession of Albania to the uh, Conference of Security Cooperation Europe, the establishment of diplomatic relations with common economic trade market and in June 1991, the Federal Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Austria, via note to the Albanian Embassy in Vienna on August 9, 1991, asked the Albanian government to agree for the accreditation of Kurt Spellinger as ambassador of Republic of Austria to Albania, now with residence in Vienna, not in Belgrade, and accredited only for Albania demonstrating a significant increased attention of official Vienna to Albania, which was entering the path of great political changes. On September 27, 1991, Ambassador Kurt Spellinger visited Tirana for the first time. In a meeting with the high level authorities of the country, the ambassador openly stated that now there were no political obstacles for the Austrian government to help and cooperate with Albania, where concrete and extensive economic and political reforms were being implemented. In the context of this increased attention paid by the Austrian government, the rapid political developments that were taking place in Albania, as well as the growing concern of the Albanian government for the Yugoslav crisis on the northern borders of Albania, Foreign Minister Mok inviting the Albanian Foreign Minister Mohamed Kaplani to Vienna December 1991. Now, as a part of the technical government, they were preparing the country for early elections in March 1992. This was the first visit of an Albanian foreign minister to Vienna. He was received by foreign minister Alois Mok, Federal Chancellor Ranitsky, Austrian President Kurt Waldian, 
It was agreed on Austria's comprehensive support to the political economic processes initiated in Albania, support for a peaceful solution within the European structure, structures for Kosovo, and respect for the national rights of Albanians in their territory in Yugoslavia in the context of the crisis in Yugoslavia. With the formation of the new democratic government in Tirana after elections March 1992, Ambassador Spellinger in May of the same year, 1992, began efforts, efforts to open a representative office of the Austrian embassy in Tirana for the first time, which he achieved during 1993. Meanwhile, in 1992, Albania was represented in Vienna by Albert Alicka as the first ambassador of the new democratic government. The two sides are now diplomatically represented in the two in the two respective capitals, inheriting no problems from the past in their bilateral relations, and started a new stage of cooperation between the two countries in all fields. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Tilly, for that first um, contribution. And uh, in order not to lose too much time for our tight schedule, I'll hand immediately over to Professor Dr. Pascal Milo. He's a historian, the former Minister of Foreign Affairs and former Minister for European Integration of Albania, and will speak about Albanian-Austrian relations during the last decade of the 20th century. Professor, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. I hope that uh, our communication will, will be good because uh, I have seen that there are some troubles from our side. Uh, let's hope that uh, will work uh, well. Uh, as uh, Pranvera told to us uh, the relations between our two countries until uh, 1991 have been uh, modest and limited for many reasons. I will try to speak to you about the relations after 92, after the elections of the 22nd March of 92, when the Democratic Party, the winner of the elections, created the new government. And as a democratic government, uh, it's well received in Austria very well, not only in Austria, but in the whole of Europe and uh, brought favorable conditions for much more rapid development of relations between our two countries. A new content of, was created and extended scientific and so on. From the political aspect, the relations consisted in an exchange of high level visits, not only of foreign ministers, but of, of prime ministers, presidents, speakers of the parliament, other members of the respective governments, parliamentary delegations, etc. Mr. Busek had been one of the high level visitors during time in Albania in 1993 as a deputy chancellor of Austria. Uh, they, during the period between 92 until 96, the relations were good politically speaking, and not only politically, but and economically. But this uh, positive development uh, in our relations was temporarily suspended after the problematic uh, elections of 26th of May, 96, and especially after the dramatic events that took place in Al seven with the fall of the pyramid schemes. Albania has 
plunge into a deep political and social crisis. The public order was threatened and the country was in danger to becoming involved in a civil war. As maybe you know too, the international community came to the aid of Albania during this time. And uh, Austria played a very important role to overcome this crisis and have participated and with a military contingent in the framework of uh, operation called ALBA. But uh, what was much more important during this time have been uh, the statements of the high level uh, of the government of Austria, the president of Austria, to Albanian politicians. And especially, I like to mention the very important role of the former Chancellor Vranitsky, who came to Tirana country in different times to consult but and to mediate political forces in Albania to reach an agreement, which at the end of the day was reached the, and uh, uh, the country went in the new elections in June 97. The elections of 97 uh, were won by Socialist Party and some other small political parties and was created the new government in which uh, I was honored to have the place of the foreign minister of Albania. Uh, during the years of uh, my tenure as a foreign minister, the relations between our two countries really have been developed uh, in all the fields of the cooperation, politically, first of all, but not only uh, in this field, but economically too. Uh, especially, I have been in a very close relations and with uh, Deputy Chancellor and Foreign Minister Schüssel and uh, many other uh, representatives of uh, Austrian diplomacy. And we have worked closely during this time, uh, not only to face the difficulties of Albania inside the country, but especially and to present uh, the Albanian reality to international community. Austria had been one of the main partners during this time for close cooperation. And I always am remembering the consultations and the cooperation with Mr. Schüssel and many other uh, uh, representatives of the uh, Austrian government. Especially, uh, they did a good job during this time to consult Democratic Party from political point of view, being in the same family, not to not to leave the parliament, not to refuse to enter to, to, to the parliament, to discuss and to participate actively uh, in the political life of Albania. And they, good, they did a good job because at the end of 98, Democratic Party entered in the parliament after uh, after the approving the new constitution of Albania, uh, which uh, was a very good document for the time being. Except the political cooperation, 
and especially the framework uh, and to the international organizations like OCE or the, the Friends of Albania or during the meetings that we had in other uh, or international organizations, especially Austria played a very important role during the conflict in Kosovo. We really had during this time very good and close cooperation with Austria, not only in bilateral relations, but also in the framework of uh, uh, European Union decisions or in uh, different other uh, international gatherings in which uh, have been discussed and decided about the Kosovo, especially during the uh, Rambouillet Agreement. I have been in very close relations with uh, Mr. Petric, who was a representative of the ambassador of EU during this time, especially for the conflict in Kosovo. And also from Austria during this time uh, was delivered a very, very uh, important assistance economic and financial. Only for giving shelter to Albanians from Kosovo in Albania, the Austrian government have delivered more than 500 million shillings compared with uh, some other countries, maybe much more richer and bigger this has been a very, very important uh, assistance during this uh, difficult time. I don't like to speak uh, about the economic cooperation, which has been a very important component in our relations, but I like to mention that many projects, which started from 92 until 96 and has have been stopped after the crisis, the Albanian government during my tenure did a good job to restart all projects, all Austrian projects in Albania, and they did. And have been realized uh, very good projects, for instance, for uh, rehabilitation of hydropower plants in uh, Drina River in the north of Albania, the construction of water supplies in some uh, cities, of Albania or in, in investments in tourism, in education, and uh, especially uh, uh, in energy, in hotel, schools, and so on. Uh, until 2001, the assistance of uh, Austria or let's say the uh, the implementation of the pro Austrian projects uh, have been have reached uh, nearly 275 million shillings, and the trade between our two countries until or at uh, 2001 have been more than 220 uh, million shillings. This, these are the main indications, but of course there are a lot of other details. We don't have enough time. I remember quite well the, our close cooperation with Austrian ambassadors in Tirana, uh, who had been very cooperative, and also with my colleagues and many other people from Austria. Uh, and I hope that what is we are doing now is a strong basis for the future. And such activities like this activity today are uh, contributing to know each other much better and to, to know each other better and to work much more closely and not only in a passive way, not only Austria to help Albania in difficult days or Austria to assist Albania, but we should 
cooperate in the framework of Albanian European integration, which is very important for us. The ambassador, uh, the foreign minister Jachka spoke about the importance of our relations now, but I hope that after our elections in April, Albania will have a new perspective in the cooperation with uh, Austria and the framework of European Union. Thank you Thank very, you much, very much, much for your attention. <laughs> Thank you very much, Professor Milo. This is a perfect bridge to the next contribution. He has been mentioned quite some time um, in our event now. So I hand directly over to the chairman of the Institute for the Danube region and Central Europe, and also the former vice chancellor of Austria, Dr. Erhard Busek, who will tell us a little bit more about traditional relationships in the EU integration area. Erhard, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Sebastian. Uh, all my best critics uh, to you as old friends, especially to Pascal Biro. Uh, I'm really happy to meet you again at this opportunity uh, because I remember uh, the uh, good contacts we had and also some results we were able to reach. I think listening to this historical presentation, which were excellent, <coughs> I'm asking for your forgiveness. I might change the approach. Uh, I'm doing it from a personal way. Uh, I'm born in 1941. I grew up uh, after the Second World War uh, in a family which was uh, in a certain way very much connected uh, with the efforts in the old Austro-Hungarian monarchy. Uh, not historically, I may say, uh, but by lifetime because they were in the construction business. And so far, my grandparents were, uh, or my grandfather uh, and uh, my grand-grandfather were working everywhere in, in the Austrian monarchy uh, here to build up, uh, I think, uh, concert halls and theaters, but also railway stations and so on and so on. Uh, I think uh, this was an interesting experience because uh, these, this generation understood by the breakdown of the monarchy, uh, this field of business is finished and it will change. And they were very critical against the upcoming nationalism. Full stop here, general remark. What is the view uh, on this? My grandfather told me always, there was only one nation in the Balkans being not so nationalistic, having another view, and then he was mentioning the Albanians. Uh, I think he was not uh, able to explain from where the Albanians were coming. And as far as I know, history and explanations, it's not quite clear. They are not Slavic. Uh, maybe they have different other routes. Back, back, back to the history, which is a very interesting story. That was not uh, a story to tell. I think the interesting story by my uh, grandparents and afterwards also my parents was mentioning a famous name of Albanians connected with the professional business in which uh, my family has been, construction. I think there was always mentioned Nicholas Ritter von Gega. Uh, Gega is a famous name. I think there's always a battle. Is he from Trieste or is he an Albanian? I presume he might be, have been an Albanian, and he was extremely important for the technical development. For what? Uh, I think he, he's always mentioned that he had really the idea about the Suez Canal, uh, which was later on done by Les Epps, and uh, the Austrians didn't get the job uh, to build it up. But Rita von Gega, uh, he was a, an aristocrat uh, decorated by the emperor, uh, I think uh, built up the Dono Save Adria Railway, the connection from Vienna to Trieste, uh, doing a very important building. Uh, this is the Semmering, uh, passing by 1,000 meters, uh, coming from Vienna, then towards uh, Styria, Carinthia, uh, until Slovenia, and so on and so on. 
Uh, it was technically an impressive uh, done job, which is still existing. It's now under fundamental protection because we are building now a tunnel uh, instead of it. It's not yet finished. It lasts one and a half year longer because it's not so easy. So you can even now understand which difficulties Gega had to overcome to build this railway connection. This was the first name I had in memory. The other part of my family was way more devoted to culture, especially to theater. Here, a very famous Albanian was always named, uh, the famous actor of the Burg Theater, Moisi. Moisi was an Albanian. And so far, I think uh, of great importance for the cultural life here in Vienna. I was not really aware that he was an Albanian. Thanks to an Albanian state president, I got a better knowledge because you had a state president with the name Moisiu, if I'm right in my memory. And it was very impressive for me because, and I know how this actor was looking. Uh, he had a, a painting in his office room uh, about his relative with the name Moisiu, Moisi. Here, connection between Albania and Austria. And here also at the middle of culture. First, construction business, uh, technical business, uh, but then afterwards also by culture, uh, by theater, and so on, and, and so on. These were my first experience uh, with uh, Albania. Also, I got told stories in the time of the communists uh, that uh, the Albanians are in difficulties on the one side, the Italians on the other side, uh, before the First World War, the Austrians, uh, later on, uh, the Serbs and so on and so on, all uh, these difficulties trying to muddle through, uh, because I think this was a possibility because they have been a part uh, of the Italian kingdom uh, for a short time and so on and so on. This was not too much told uh, here in reality but to get an overview how difficult the things have been uh, in the past. I registered uh, that the Albanian uh, state, even in the time of communism, had always an ambassador in Vienna, even if the Austrians had no ambassador in Albania. Uh, I think here I learned that it was extremely important for Albania to be connected because in 1912, uh, as we know, uh, with the help of the Austrians and others, I think it was at the Berlin Congress, uh, Albania was created. First as a kingdom, not easy to find a king, but this is another story. <laughs> uh, but here, I think to be positioned uh, in this context, this I learned also a little bit. I will stop here uh, because it's not a little history. These are only stories or maybe anecdotes. But I think for me, it's a little bit uh, continuing. I think uh, that's now a mixture of reporting, which I'm uh, doing here. Uh, as I was moving in politics, especially in the direction of Southeast Europe or the Balkans and so on and so on, I did uh, my first visit uh, uh, to uh, Albania and I met here Sari Berisha, uh, I think he was coming from the medical faculty, a medical university. Uh, here he had also functioned politically uh, in the old party, but then he was responsible for a new party and new democratic life. And I met him very often, as I also met a lot of other politicians. I don't want to drop, to, to drop names. Uh, I think I'm quite happy again, Pascal, that I'm uh, meeting you. And I also met later on Edirama and so on and so on, uh, because I was very interested in what he was doing as a mayor of uh, Tirana, because I was deputy mayor of Vienna, and I know how difficult it is to be in cities, especially under the condition of the communist time and what to do here. And I admired him uh, for creating a colorful Tirana, which he did, and it was very impressive, and he was all very much honored on this. Uh, I think uh, I want to stop here because I think it's going too far if I'm starting, uh, telling stories. I was quite close to Franz Veronitsky and I was happy uh, that he was taking this job uh, concerning uh, this crisis 
uh, as already mentioned, uh, happening in Albania, because in this time I overtook uh, the stability pact for Southeast Europe, and again I had to work with Albanians. In general, I may tell you, I had different partners through all the newly created nation states here, uh, because I think uh, the map of uh, the Balkans has changed in this time, really uh, in, in different ways and so on and so on. And I think sometimes uh, the rest of Europe had to learn a lot of new times, which uh, they were not aware, uh, because uh, this famous uh, word of Winston Churchill, the uh, Balkans have more history as they can consume, is really right. But it's not only history, it's also creating new realities under which uh, I think the region is still suffering or is able to handle it or not yet handled to it, that's for sure clear. I think I was also a little bit more involved uh, in Albania by assistance which was coming uh, here from my country and from my Ministry of Education. I have to mention my old friend Peter Maringa. Uh, he did an investment concerning a school near to Skodra. Uh, it's a Peter Maringa school. I think it is a professional training school and extremely helpful. I have to mention <clears throat> my successor as Minister of Education, Minister Elisabeth Guerra, who did also a lot here for the Balkans. She did also a lot for the Opera House. I think she started again to create uh, opera, operas here. I think Don Giovanni and also other things uh, uh, have been happened. I think uh, it's an uh, obligation uh, which Austrians have to do it in this direction. Um, I have only then to mention two connections. The one is more going to the judicial affairs. Uh, a schoolmate of mine, Roland Mikler, after he went to pension in the Ministry of Justice, uh, was brought by OECE uh, to uh, uh, Albania to improve the judicial system. He had some success, but he's always telling me job is not yet finished because he was still looking to Albania that the things uh, uh, might uh, move forward in the right way. I want to close a little bit with history. I was extremely happy being on the advisory board of Seagal Unica, uh, which is an important company in Albania, in Northern Macedonia, and for sure in Kosovo, uh, that they did some contribution uh, on an exhibition which was done in Tirana concerning the 100 years existence of Albania. I think it was an exhibition, ex exhibition where we brought their helmet and sword of Skanda bag uh, to this exhibition here. And uh, I was the one pushing here the Austrian politicians to allow it. Because I think starting from the state president, they were always very anxious and shivering that the Albanians might try to get helmet and sword for themselves back. Now we made a treaty, uh, the Albanians made the law, and now it's again in the uh, uh, Museum for Arts History in Austria. Here, this is my very mixed uh, contribution here with all the different uh, uh, experiences I had. Last experience is uh, the Secretary General uh, of uh, the Regional Cooperation Council, Mrs. Prego, uh, who is doing a very good job uh, for cooperation here. In general, I may say many thanks to my Albanian friends, because sometimes I have to confess to have a job uh, in uh, the Balkans to create more cooperation, to come closer to the European Union is not easy. I have to confess it's not also easy on the European side of the membership states of the European Union. It is not only always the Balkans. It is also here in the understanding on the other side. Uh, but the Albanians were always a good and correct partner uh, doing a lot of efforts. And I hope that the things are moving forward economically and so on and so on. My last report, in the last two weeks, I convinced two Austrians to make investment uh, close to Duras. Uh, they want to buy here uh, some houses, I think, uh, to see how the coast area is developing because they're always telling me 
it's not anymore possible to go to go to Croatia or to Montenegro because it's overloaded. They are quite happy that Albania is such a beautiful country. So I have to close. I wish you all the best for the future. Looking back to the history, which is sometimes necessary, but please look to the future because it's our common future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Erhard. And uh, thank you very much for your always inspiring stories. We have heard about the European integration process, and I'm very happy that we have the expert in Austria with us when it comes to this topic, Professor Dr. Florian Bieber, who is a professor and director of the Center for Southeastern European Studies, Jean Monnet Chair in the Europeanization of Southeastern Europe at the University of Graz, and also a member of the International Council of IDM. Florian, thank you very much for joining us. And we are very much looking forward to hear on the Austrian contribution and influence in forging Western Balkans regional cooperation. Sebastian, thank you very much. Uh, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, and it's my great pleasure to speak here. Um, and uh, I think uh, I see my role as really embedding what we've heard about the relations between Albania and Austria into the larger picture. And of course, the larger picture is the region in which Albania finds itself in and the European Union in which Austria finds itself in and how this has been a mutually beneficial relationship. And I think, uh, and I, I would like to really frame it in the way which I think is, is the kind of positive note is that besides these strong bilateral relations we've heard about, uh, Austria has been one of the most steadfast supporters of the European integration of Albania, as well as the other countries in the region. And I think this uh, approach has been extremely helpful, especially because I think the best way to help one country is to help them uh, help one country, a closely linked country, in the company in which it finds itself in the region. And I think European integration is always a process which is done together best rather than alone. Um, and so that sense, I think this is one of the kind of key legacies of the continued support. And of course, one which is not always easy. I think uh, Ed Busek has mentioned that this is not a process which is always easy on each side of the story. Um, I think there's a uh, you know, you can say the positive side is that the support for Aust of Austria for the membership of the West uh, of the countries of the Western Balkans has been steadfast, irrespective of the governments, uh, and this is a consensus in Austrian politics. Um, and on the other side, Albania is the most enthusiastic. A future member state uh, of the European Union uh, in surveys continuously, um, not just of the countries of the Western Balkans, but also of the European Union, Albania has the most positive view of the European Union uh, and the most encouraging one, despite the obstacles, despite the long process of joining. And this is, you know, uh, as an EU citizen, always humbling to see those who are not yet members uh, have such an enthusiasm for this shared project. And, you know, we all know the weaknesses of the European Union, but again, I mean, as a, as a, uh, as a very proud European, I always say we can criticize the institutions and love the, the union. And these are two parallel processes. In fact, um, in fact, they are mutually reinforcing. So I think one thing which, which uh, we, we has been very clear is that over the last decades, there's been a strong support of Austria for uh, Albania and the, and the countries and uh, neighboring countries to be part of a regional cooperation which would enable and facilitate joining the European Union. And uh, Ed Busik is the embodiment of many of them with the Southeast European Co Cooperation Initiative going back to the 1990s and then replaced by the Stability Pact, which of course has been an, a key actor founded in fact 20, uh, uh, um, yes, a, a bit more than 20 years ago. Um, and then uh, also the Regional Cooperation in Initiative, which has been mentioned. But I also want to mention the, Balkan, uh, the, the Berlin process in which Austria has played an important role over the last six years as a, a group of friends of enlargement, um, supporters of enlargement, trying to provide additional impetus in a creative way um, for the countries of the Western Balkans. Now, um, I think we all of us, all of us who've been supporting regional cooperation and the membership uh, of the countries in the European Union must say that we're all impatient. Um, and I think impatience is a good impulse in politics and a good impulse also when looking back because um, one shouldn't be satisfied that this is process which began in Thessaloniki or even before that of offering Albania and its neighbors membership in the European Union that it so far has not yielded as many member states as we were all hoping um, back 20 years ago when that prospect was made quite explicitly. 
So in that sense, there is, uh, I think, a healthy impatience. Um, but also, I want to say from the Austrian side, it is often, of course, as I've mentioned, a key pillar of Austrian foreign policy to support the countries of the Western Balkans. The citizens of Austria are not quite as enthusiastic, but still, and I think this is something which is interesting, uh, there, is, uh, there is an equal number of, uh, of uh, Austrians who are skeptical, as well as those who are fine with uh, Albania and the other countries joining. And in fact, most of the skepticism in Austria is not directed towards the Western Balkans, but rather directed towards uh, other countries. Um, but also then if you look, dig deeper, and uh, colleagues have done studies in other EU countries, if you dig deeper, um, it is in fact so that EU citizens are overall maybe skeptical, but because they ask the wrong questions. So when they're asked about enlargement, they're asked not, do you want the country to join when it's ready to join, when it fulfills the criteria, but they're asked, do you want your, that country to join? But of course, no, neither Albania nor any other country will join next week. So it's a very hypothetical question. But in fact, the real question is, are you in favor of the countries of the, Euro of the Western Balkans and Albania joining when they fulfill the criteria after a due process? And if you would ask this question, the answers would be quite different. And in fact, colleagues have done a recent study uh, in France where they have found that in fact, many French don't even know where the Western Balkans are. So in fact, a lot of it is based on, on not knowledge. And I think this is where I wanna kind of come back to the, some of the points made earlier is that I think it's maybe looking back at this relationship and one which has been supportive um, Austria of, of, of joining the European Union, but also working together in the region and always making very clear that this is about any cooperation in the region is never a replacement uh, of EU integration. I think this has become an important message again over the last year when there's been discussion about the so-called regional cooperation in the framework of mini Schengen, which I, you know, I think nobody can see as a negative trend and a negative initiative, which in fact, um, also the Albanian government has been promoting actively, but it's always only uh, a, it's not a substitute, it's only an additional layer of cooperation in addition to EU integration. It can never offer the same uh, economic prospects, the same integration to the larger European debates, mobility as, uh, as integration does. So regional cooperation is the same as, you know, Austria is cooperating with its neighbors, but it's not a substitute for EU integration. But this is maybe the kind of looking forward part, which I would like to maybe emphasize and, and, and close on, is um, that I think what, what the future lies is much more also in, this, in the exchange and in the getting to know Albania a lot better. So I think as has been said, uh, Austria, many Austrians have been engaged in Albania and the Austrian government has supported projects in Albania and initiatives, but I think not enough Austrians have seen Albania. Um, uh, and I think this is a problem for many citizens of the European Union. Few of them have actually really discovered the Western Balkans and have discovered Albania. Um, and I think those, and this is the study which was done by colleagues in France, those who knew somebody or had traveled to the Western Balkans in general had a much more positive view of the region. And we're much more, uh, much more favorably inclined towards uh, the um, the them joining the European Union. And I think this is, to some degree, of course, uh, why Austria is maybe more positive because it knows the area much better, it knows Albania much better. So I think you know maybe in a certain way the plea would be is finding ways to actually get ordinary Austrians to get to know Albania a lot better, um, as well as more EU citizens in general. Um, and you know, I see this also with uh, with my students. You know, there it's it's easy to find Albanians who want to study in Austria, but it's much harder to convince Austrians to discover Albania that it's a worthwhile place to study in and to experience and maybe learn the language. And so I think it's really there where we all have to work on to make sure that this is a two way street of discovering not just in one way but also in the other direction. And of course, tourists are coming to Albania, but it's more than tourism. It's about studying history, politics, studying with uh, colleagues from Albania. And I think there we can do a lot more and I think I hope that in that sense this development of this relationship is one and again which is much more based on on an equal exchange in both directions and again I mean EU integration is fundamentally about this and this is often forgotten in the discussion about enlargement and joining and conditionality and criteria that at the end of the day this process is about ensuring equality I mean that the countries whether you're Malta Luxembourg Estonia Austria or in the future Albania you know you are equal in there um, and, and that kind of sharing of responsibility, but also equality, I think is this deep message which, which the European integration is all about. And I think 
this is maybe the future we should look into and where you know hopefully the next uh, decades of uh, albanian austrian relations will offer some interesting impetus and and insight and where all of us who are working on this can try to do our best to improve it and to to work on what has been achieved so far thank you very much Karina, thank you very much for this uh, last contribution looking into the future and uh, this leaves us with concluding remarks especially when it comes to Austrian Albanian relations, but also the Western Balkans. We have um, one very special last uh, comment that will come from Ambassador Klaus Wölfer, who is the director for Southeast Europe, EU enlargement and twinning, and also special representative for the Western Balkans at the Austrian Federal Ministry for European and International Affairs. Ambassador Wölfer. Please. Thank, thank you very much, Professor Schaefer, uh, ladies and gentlemen, excellencies. Um, let me just wrap up in a, in a way um, to express my satisfaction and uh, happiness with what we have had in this past hour. It was a rich uh, circle that we did uh, looking back at the beginning at the uh, dates of the establishment and development of the relations and then having two practitioners to a minister and a former deputy prime minister sort of enriching this historical dimension with their own testimony. And Professor Biba sort of doing the bridge towards um, the present time and the future in the same way as the two ministers did in their statements, in their initial statements. Uh, underlining our Austria's strong uh, commitment to uh, Albania and all other countries of the, Euro of, um, the Western Balkans uh, to join the European Union. Let me add uh, on, on a personal note, uh, Professor Bieber just mentioned that there are not too many who have seen Albania. I've had the privilege um, to uh, do my first business trip to Albania from the embassy in Belgrade, which at that time took care of Albania in 1987-88. Uh, to an Albania which was so totally different uh, from the Albania that we know, now know. And I can only, if, if there are uh, people who have not traveled to Albania are listening to us or watching us, I can only recommend uh, to uh, go to discover this um, magnificent country, very rich and uh, very accessible in every way, not only physically, but also through the, through the books, through the literature, um, uh, Ismail Kadare and others. Uh, that make it uh, so so uh, accessible and uh, which underline or make it clear to us how much we are linked and we are all part of our uh, European um, uh, family. So in this uh, sense, I'm really grateful to Ambassador Bimo of having, having had uh, this idea of getting together. I think we have to celebrate uh, uh, these bilateral relations from now and uh, now and then. Uh, this is uh, is necessary. This is what a family life is is made of. You have to uh, find positive occasions to do that. He, he has spotted them in these sixty five years, and I think this was a, a great idea. And we will not wait another sixty five years to celebrate again. I'm sure. So thank you very much, and um, back to the moderator. Thank you very much, Ambassador Wolfa. I think. As well, this was a fantastic event commemorating this occasion. I would like to thank everyone for, on behalf of the Institute for the Danube Region and Central Europe who was involved in presenting today. And again, of course, uh, thank you very much to Ambassador Bimo and Ambassador Wolfer for the initiative. I uh, would also like to thank our audience. We have had some, uh, quite some numbers that were watching this. If someone missed it, there is the opportunity. It will stay on the IDM YouTube channel and we can rewatch it um, again here. Um, I mentioned in the very beginning, today is Women's Day and uh, the IDM has a podcast. And you might say now, please not another podcast about <coughs> women, which is exactly the title of the podcast that we published today. So I encourage you to um, listen to this for Female experts from the IDM team have done something wonderful, I assume. I haven't had the chance to hear it yet as well because I didn't want to get involved in this. Um, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, last but not least, when we continue this, and on the 75th occasion of this anniversary, I very much do hope that we have 
two EU member countries that will celebrate this occasion. Thank you very much. And I'm looking forward um, to at the latest in 10 years when we redo this event. Everyone until then, stay safe and healthy. And thank you very much again for the good cooperation. Thank you.